compulsive patterns of ego are reflective of four prime wounds within our ego structure. And when these four wounds are unresolved and active, how active and unresolved our wounds are is reflective of how compulsive we tend to be in our lives. And that's part of the healing process of addiction where we go, wow, I'm only compulsive, not because I should label myself an addict, but my addictive compulsions are just showing me that there are some unresolved wounds inside of me. So let's unpack these wounds and heal them so we can bring these compulsive patterns to an end. And in doing so, we will cultivate more of the love within us so we can wake up out of the dream, the dream called dislike. Because I don't necessarily utilize the word illusion sometimes. I always use it in very relative terms, not absolute terms. But if life is a dream that you wake up from, the dream that you wake up out of is a dream called dislike. That's a more accurate way of talking about it from a heart center perspective. And in the dream of dislike, either there's someone else you dislike, there's a belief that someone else dislikes you, or you're the one that you dislike. That's the dream of dislike. So maybe we can just kind of boil it down to one way of measuring how deeply entrenched in ego we are is how deeply do you dislike another? How deeply do you dislike yourself? Or how many other people do you dislike? Your relationship with dislike can measure the density of your ego. And another way of measuring the density of ego is how compulsive you are. How compulsive you are is based on how unresolved these four prime wounds are. So what are the four prime wounds of ego? They are neglect. Abuse, codependency, and loss. Neglect, the first one. Neglect is the overlooking or refusal of affection. Affection is the willingness to provide basic needs for a human being. And one of those needs that a human being needs is encouragement and attention. When we don't offer encouragement, when we don't offer attention, we are deprived of affection. When we are deprived of affection, we feel neglected. When we feel neglected, we are trained to either neglect ourselves, which means someone else didn't fulfill my needs, so I'm going to become a person who doesn't know my needs, or I'm gonna manifest a partner who's not in tune with my needs. Neglect. What's amazing about neglect is that neglect registers by the nervous system as traumatic as abuse. So abuse is an expression of domination projected onto another. And you can say neglect is almost its opposite in some ways because with abuse, there is a great amount of unconscious presence where someone is receiving all the attention and from the most unconscious standpoint. And neglect is not receiving any attention, but the refusal to have your needs met in your most formative years and being completely dominated by the presence of someone's shadow registers as the same level of trauma. So that means for all of us in the room and on this live stream, you might have been neglected, you might have been abused, and your pain is the same. So we don't judge, we don't categorize, we don't compare. And 
And then some of us have the combination of I was abused and dominated by someone in my life. And then the other parent didn't come to my rescue or listen to me. So one abused and one neglected. And I say this with great compassion. Then we have the third kind of wound, one I know extremely well, codependency. Let me put codependency in very specific words. Codependency is the annihilation of your boundaries. I love my parents. I love them to death. Here's the thing. My boundaries were annihilated. <coughs> annihilated. And what was confusing for me as a child is that when my parents were set off because they came home from work and they're triggered by their bosses and had a long day and just wanted some time to rest and they've been working all day and the role called employee and now they got to step into the role of mother and father. And when they didn't know how to give themselves the space they needed, because in their mind, if I took time for myself, now I'm being a neglectful parent. So yay, I get to spend all the time in the world with a parent who's completely out of alignment with their heart. Yay. Because after all, they don't want to be neglectful. Then any little thing I do to set them off, which triggers their ego to let them know, hey, you're being triggered because life is telling you you need some space. You need to have some time to yourself. And if I triggered their ego as a child, I got in trouble and was made to believe I did something wrong. And so I start to misperceive life as, oh, when I ask my mom and dad a question, I'm too much for them. Oh, it's wrong to ask a question. I should just keep that inside myself. Oh, my parents asked me how my day was. I told them I had a bad day. Oh, that's more for them to take care of. They got short-tempered. Oh, I shouldn't share my feelings with them. Do you see what I'm saying? And, and because you trust your parents to give you the feedback of what's right and what's wrong, you're actually learning to be a servant to their ego structure. And serving someone else's ego structure is priming you to be a servant for other people's ego structures, whether it's a narcissistic boss or an emotionally unavailable partner. Codependency. And let's say you didn't live a neglectful childhood. Let's say you didn't live in abusive circumstances and you weren't around codependent people. Let's say you lived in a very well-adjusted, unconditionally loving family with some, some of us has. Some of us have more than others. Let's say you had the best upbringing possible. No reason to assume all of us have atrocious childhoods. Mine wasn't atrocious, but the codependent parts were horrible. I just didn't know it at the time. So let's say you came from an unconditionally loving family. The pain and healing that will take place will then be when the people that represent that unconditional love cross over to the other side and you experience loss. So even if you had the best relationship possible, it is through loss that you come into contact with the wounds that need to be healed to help you integrate your ego. So it's either going to be some form of neglect, some form of abuse, some form of codependency, or some form of loss. And then we can cross-reference them. I felt neglected, which means I either attract more neglectful behavior or even attracting abusive behavior because the consciousness, if it opens really slowly, says, I'd rather have the attention of an abuser than the loneliness of neglect. And that's perpetuating an abuse cycle. Or the relationship between codependency and loss that says I'm so codependently attached to my partner because I can't bear to deal with losing love when I have it. Or I'm so afraid of how attached and codependent I get when I open to love 
I'm just going to push it away and stay in the loss. Because as long as I stay in the loss, I can't lose anymore. And I'll just stay afraid of gain. You can cross-reference all these little quadrants. And somewhere, somewhere along the line, you're going to find the formula of your hurt. The recipe of your pain that you didn't create, that is just orbiting inside of you, waiting for your conscious recognition. And the more we use our pain as our healer, instead of our pain defining us, our pain can divine us. So in the name of our healing, let's just try repeat out. Repeat after me out loud. I allow allow all patterns patterns of neglect, neglect, abuse, abuse, codependency, codependency, and loss loss associated with mother or father. To be forgiven now. now. I allow allow all patterns of abuse, abuse, neglect, neglect, codependency and loss loss associated associated with others others to be forgiven completely. completely. I allow allow all patterns patterns of codependency Abuse, abuse, neglect, neglect and, loss, and loss associated, associated with the dimension of time, dimension of time any, and all incarnation, any and all incarnations blamed on the universe, on the universe onto, God, onto God or perpetuated by myself, perpetuated by myself to, be completely now. to be forgiven completely now. I allow all patterns of abuse, all patterns of abuse neglect, neglect, codependency and loss, codependency and loss from, all ancestral bloodlines, from all ancestral bloodlines, whether male to female, male to female, female, to male, female, to male, male to male, male to male, or female to female, female, to, female to, be to be forgiven completely now. And knowing it is so, knowing it is so I allow, I allow neglect, Abuse, abuse, codependency, codependency and, loss, and loss to be forgiven completely, to be forgiven completely for, the greater good of all. for the greater good of all. And so I'm healed. And so I'm healed. You feel that? Deep. And I can so gently walk you through or repeat after me like that because we're talking about this at such a high level of consciousness. There's nothing being overlooked or missed. We can allow this so beautiful angelic presence of energy to just, in such a heavenly way, just find all of the hurt inside of us and blow it out. You know one of the reasons why people work at healing for so many years and never get to the other side of healing? Because they don't approach it gently enough. Most people, if they approach things gently, they don't give it enough attention. If they give it enough attention, they approach it too aggressively. We have to learn is to approach it with complete focus and absolute gentleness and respect. Once you get that combination right, all this healing is instantaneous. That's why when we get together, things happen. We don't mess around. Try this repeat after me out loud. I allow allow all associations associations in my subconscious mind mind that make neglect, neglect, abuse, abuse, codependency, codependency, and loss loss, familiar familiar to be cleared out of my energy field, field. 
return to the source of its origin. Transmute it completely. And healed to completion now. And that means, as of this moment, I command my subconscious mind to recognize and label codependency, loss, neglected abuse as foreign experiences. So to, to delete out of my conscious awareness any and all realities that reflect those labels. So to eliminate out of my field any potential of codependency, loss, abuse, and neglect. And in knowing it is so, I allow my subconscious mind to acknowledge Safety, Safety. Wholeness. wholeness, fulfillment, fulfillment. Abundance. abundance, inspiration, inspiration. And, joy. and joy as my new familiar experiences. As my new familiar Attracting into my conscious awareness, into my conscious awareness. These, new these new familiar experiences now that I'm instructing my subconscious mind to identify, to identify with, inspiration, with inspiration, wholeness, wholeness confidence, confidence abundance, abundance, and fulfillment. And fulfillment. I, identify I identify with it. I attract it. I attract it. it is one with who I am and will not settle for anything less. And so I am healed.